Hello, this is Blaine Pertler with Pertler Electric, and this stator is out of a ZRT600. And this stator, they use these in uh, all years of the uh, ZRT600s up until 2000. 2000, they go to the 3D ignition with a throttle position sensor, and then uh, I believe the last year, the 600s, which was 2002 or so, they actually even had power valves in them. So that's a little bit different stator, but up until uh, 99, this is the stator that was used in the ZRT600. Um, if, if you look at this and then go look at my other video with the carbureted ZR500, ZR600 staters, this is uh, pretty similar to that style stator. Uh, they're not interchangeable, but at least uh, size-wise and so forth, they're, they're fairly similar. On this stator, just like all my other ones, what we have is a power side, and those are the coils here. We've got five coils, and this is the power for your lights, hand warmers, and uh, gauges, and so forth. And then we've got our two ignition coils, and this is pretty typi typical for the 1990s up through late 90s uh, staters of almost all kinds from CAT. We've got a low side and a high side. Some people call them primary, secondary. On this stator, when you look at it from the top down with the wire you know, coming out of the top here, on your on your sled it actually would go on your sled like this that wire goes down and you know comes out the back here and so forth if you look at it like this on your sled this is actually your your primary or the one that's 450 ohms and this is your secondary now on the ZRT 600 this is only 20 ohms on the ZRT like 800s 900s thousands this one is 25 but on the ZRT 600 it's different this is only 20 ohms but this one is still 450 ohms so let's go ahead and do our quick electrical test on this test our ohms and the first thing I walk through on this is if somebody just wanted to go ahead and check their lighting side or their power side just to make sure there's no breaks in the wire that your multimeter put it on the lowest setting on mine I put it down to the 200 setting because you basically almost only just looking for continuity the the ohm readings are going to be very low find your two yellow wires coming up to the plug here and go ahead and use those two female connectors there put them in get connection and it's only going to be like I said point point four point five maybe point six it's going to be very low readings for the uh, power side just looking for continuity and then you can also check your ground make sure your grounds okay uh, doesn't matter if you use the negative or the positive when you do all of these checks put it on the male connector and then through your eye your eyelet loop there and it'll be very low 0 0.3 0 0.4 ohms just looking for continuity usually if the ground breaks it ends up breaking somewhere in here in the connection the wire to the eyelet connection so always make sure that's uh, strong and, and, and connected and a lot of times there's shrinky tube over it and so forth. So now we move on to the ignition coils themselves. Because my lowest setting on here is 200, I need to go up to the 2000 ohm setting now. So I change my multimeter to the 2000 ohm setting. And now we go to the four prong plug the little plastic plug here, the smaller one, and it has this little plastic uh, little nub, little connector on here, and instead of just going through all the wire colors on here, because I've had guys have sleds that were wires were spliced in or something was done to them, they couldn't even really tell what the colors were, I just go by plug orientation. So that little, that little nub, that little plastic piece that catches and locks that in place when you plug it into your CDI box, I put that at the 6 o'clock position right here by my left thumb. And what we'll do is we'll check the bottom right to the top right connector. And we get, that's where we get the 20 ohms for the high speed coil on this. And this is me measuring 21 uh, it rounds up because the multimeter was on a higher setting, but 20.6, 20 20.6 20 ohms. I, you know, put this back down to 200, so it's a little bit more accurate at a lower ohm reading. Now I bump it back up to the 2000 because we're going to look for 450 for the primary or the low speed coil. Now that one is measured the top two connectors, so we do top left to top right. And on this particular stator, uh, we've got 441. 
Uh, this is not one I've rewound yet or anything. This is just one uh, that I had uh, sent in as a core. So we've got 441. The bottom left hand on here, a part of the plug, this is just the ground. You don't even use that to check anything. Now we go kitty corner, top left to bottom right, and that gives us in series our coils. So now we'll just have the 20 plus the 441. Now we've got 462 for our reading. So if if you read 20 and then you read whatever, 440, 450 for the second one, they will read in series. You don't necessarily have to check them that way, but at least now if you, uh, I'm going to say kind of screw up or measure them in the wrong order and you get a 460, you know, well, that's a little bit higher. I guess, you know, that's in series, so they're okay. Now, the one thing that I uh, forgot to mention is if either one of those reads higher, much higher than the the 450 and we're talking room temperature then they are bad ohms are a derivative or direct result of the amount of wire that's on that bobbin that's on that coil and they wind that so they only has so much wire and it's 450 ohms if it's cold it'll read a little bit lower and if it's warm if you've been running the sled it'll read a little bit higher but if you if you're if it's cold or room temperature and either one of those coils reads much higher and in fact really even the primary coil the low speed if that reads like 455 at room temperature or even when it's cold 455 it's bad because you don't all of a sudden just get more wire on there but you all of a sudden got more resistance from somewhere so usually that's due to internal shorting so that's a ZRT 600 stator and how to test it. You can always get a hold of me by uh, PMing me on YouTube here or uh, leaving comments uh, down below and I usually see those and respond. Thank you.